I want to talk about amortizing loans. Now an amortizing loan is one where you borrow a certain amount of money and you repay it over a certain number of periods. That could be monthly, that could be yearly, um, etc. And your payments are a fixed amount and that money gets divided between interest and principal. The principal being the repayment of the loan amount. And a mortgage is a, is a good example of an amortizing loan. In fact, it's a very interesting amortizing loan because you can look at it and um, anybody who's had a mortgage knows that in the early parts of the um, uh, in the early part of the mortgage in the early years you're making a large payment but very little is paying off the balance of your loan almost all of it goes to paying off the interest as time goes on you get to a point where more and more of your money goes to paying off the principal and in the later years okay, when you get close to paying off the loan most of your payment goes to the principal and very little to the interest because the balance is very small so you're not accumulating much interest I have um, Excel up here because Excel is an excellent way to create a loan amortization table very easy to see it we can if we put the information in nicely we can change some numbers and see how things change so it's it's, it's a great way to uh, to do this okay and it's a great way to improve your Excel skills so let's start by saying with we're going to put in a loan amount and let's put in 5000 for the loan amount. We also need a number of periods and we'll say the loan will be paid off in 5 years. We need an interest rate. Let's use 9% and let's figure out what the payment is going to be. Well, we could work it out on our financial calculator and just type it in here, or we could use one of the Excel functions. If you go down to this auto sum, you may see that there's a little drop down menu here. And if you click on the drop down menu and you move down to more functions, you can, there's a drop down box here, and you can click on, for example, financial functions and scroll down. And the nice thing about Excel here is that it uses the same notation essentially as your financial calculator, at least the Texas Instruments financial calculator, PMT. PMT is the payment that we're working out, and it tells us the format. You put in the rate, you put in the number of periods, the present value or the future value. Type indicates whether it is an ordinary annuity or an annuity due. If you leave it blank, it will treat it as an ordinary annuity. So we can just we could either just type this in and follow the format or we can click this on it gives us a little table to fill in here. The rate happens to be in cell B3. The number of periods happens to be in cell B2 and the loan amount happens to be in cell B1. So if we've done that correctly we should get a repayment of 1285.46. Now let's set up the, uh, the loan amortization table. Here we're going to have the number of periods, one, two, or five. Okay, we have five periods. And so we're going to have the beginning balance. We're going to have our payment. We're going to have the amount of interest that accrues. We're going to have the amount of principal we repay. And we're going to have an ending balance. So let's see if we can't figure out what goes where. And you want to try and put in formulas. Okay, B1, you need to put an equal sign, otherwise it will just treat it as a as a label or a title. So 5,000 is our beginning balance. I put in B1 to tell it to refer here. So I could change this number later and it'll redo the calculation. My payment happens to be in cell B4. So I'm going to put in equals B4. Okay, It's gone in as a negative amount. So we don't have to subtract the payment. We'll just add this negative amount 
to the balance so we figure out our repayment. What's the interest going to be? We need a formula. The interest on the loan or the interest for period one is going to be equal to the rate which is in cell B3 times the beginning balance which is in cell B8. So if it's a 9% interest rate you're going to have you're going to have $450 in interest, right? That's pretty easy to figure out. The amount of principal you repay is going to be the difference between the payment and the amount of the um, interest. Actually, let me make this, let me change the sign here because it's going to be kind of confusing. This is negative, this is positive. That way we know what we're subtracting from what. So let me just rewrite this as equals minus b dollar sign four and I'm putting the dollar sign in I forgot to do that in the first place because when I copy this down I want it to just stay in that same spot so now it's, it's uh, you know it's not red anymore it's a positive number I can just copy this down because the payments gonna be the same every month All right. what's the principal going to be the principal repaid is going to be equal to the beginning balance which is in cell b8 minus the payment which is in cell C8 plus any interest that gets paid D8 so whoops I'm sorry I've got the repayment I, I messed that up so let me go back and refix let me go back and fix this let's do this again it's going to be not the beginning balance It's going to be the payment okay C8 minus the amount of interest that's paid which is in cell D8. All right, that looks better. So of the 1285.46 that you put in, $450 goes to interest, $835.46 goes to repaying the loan balance. And what's the ending balance? It's going to be the beginning balance, B8, minus the principal that gets repaid, which is in E8. Okay, so what I did before when I messed up is I had already taken this and subtracted this stuff out. Okay, so the ending balance is 4164.54. And you can verify that yourself. Take 5,000, subtract out 835.46, you should get 4164.54. What's the beginning balance? The beginning balance for period two is the same as the ending balance for period one. So I'm just going to type in equals F8. Okay, so there's beginning balance. And what can I do? I can copy this down. Whoops, Why, what happened there? What mistake did we make? What did I do wrong? I have B4 times B9. I forgot to put in a dollar sign here for B3 for the rate. So when I copied it down, it jumped down here. So let me let me fix that so that I can copy the formulas down. Okay, if you hit the F2 key, it lets you edit this. So let me make this B dollar sign three. That dollar sign says that when I copy this down, just stay at row three. Okay, so that's good. So now let me copy this down, see what I get. Okay, the beauty of doing it this way is you get to see all my mistakes. All right, so you're going to have $375 in interest, 9% of this. Okay, probably this is not showing decimal places, so let me add a couple decimal places here. So when I copy it down, okay, so 374.81. I can copy this down, okay, and look and see if this makes sense. If you add, if you add 9.10.65 to 374.81, you should get the payment of 1285.46 and we should be able to copy this down too. Okay, so at the end of year two you're going to owe you're going to owe three thousand two hundred and fifty three dollars and eighty eight cents. Okay, so now I should be able to copy this down and I can copy actually all of these down so you can see what's happening here and I'll just copy this down twice and I'll copy this one down twice, and then you should get a balance that's close to zero. Oh, well, in fact, it is zero. 
So let's look at what we have here. What does this loan amortization table show us? It shows us, well, we borrowed 5,000. So at the beginning of the period, we have 5,000. But there's $450 in interest. We're making a $1,285.46 payment. And at the end, we'll have paid off 835.46 and we'll owe 41.64.54. Okay, next period, we'll owe what we did at the end of last period. Okay, notice how the interest is going down and the principal amount is going up. Right? The balance is smaller, so the amount of interest, the 9% of this, is going to be smaller than 9% of 5,000. So you can see the amount of interest you're paying goes down because your balance, the balance on your loan gets smaller. Okay? And the amount of principal, the amount of your payment that gets allocated towards principal, gets bigger. And in the end, you get down to a balance of zero. Now this worked out pr pretty well. But oftentimes you'll, you'll have two or three cents. If you've ever had a car loan, you'll notice that the last payment sometimes is a few cents more or a few cents less due to rounding error. You know, they can't charge you $473.22 cents. So at the end of the four-year, six-year car loan, you may have a payment that is, you know, a little bit less or a little bit more. All right. By setting up the spreadsheet this way, I can change the numbers and you can look at different amounts. Suppose we borrow 10,000. And you can see how the loan amortizes. Same thing, you're gonna have a bigger payment because you borrowed a lot more money. Okay, more of a, you know, a lot more interest and principal, but eventually it's going to get paid off. All right, let's go back to our original 5,000. If I change the interest rate, if I make the interest rate bigger, you should use your intuition to figure out whether the, repay the payments here will be bigger or smaller. In the end, it should still pay it off to zero. Now, let's see what happens. Okay, The payments are bigger because the interest is going to be bigger each year. So the spreadsheet is really an excellent way to get an understanding for this. Um, when I first had a mortgage, this was before the days where you could log on to a website and look at your loan balance, I used to, I used to get a coupon book where I made payments, you know, whatever it was, let's just say it's a thousand, it was a thousand dollars a month, I'd mail my check, tear the coupon off, write a check for a thousand dollars, and mail it to the mortgage company, but I really had no idea what my balance was. So what I did is, I set up a spreadsheet like this, so I was able to take a look and see what I actually owed on my loan. And it was really quite nice because I could see what I was what I owed, okay, how much I had paid. And in fact, I decided I was going to start making um, some extra principal payments. And I just incorporated a separate column. And I could see, look, if I sell my house in five years and I'm paying an extra hundred dollars a month, what's my balance going to be in five years? Okay. How much how much am I going to owe the bank if I want to you know, uh, sell my house, okay, or pay off the mortgage. So it's a really nice way to do it. There are a lot of websites that, that create loan amortization tables, but you should be careful because you're not exactly sure how they've computed them. Did they use annuity due or did they use ordinary annuity? And so it's nice to do it yourself. Some of them allow you to incorporate extra principal payments, but the problem with that is is that usually it's an extra principal payment I'm paying an extra hundred a month for the life of the loan well maybe you're gonna pay an extra hundred a month this year and next year when you get a pay raise maybe you're gonna increase that to two hundred extra a month so you can you can do that and try and figure out what your balance is at any time period um, this tutorial is getting a little long so I'm gonna I'll show you in another tutorial a little graph of a mortgage repayment that shows you how the interest and the principal get paid off and that's kind of an interesting picture to look at.